Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus left Capernaum and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. Some Pharisees, testing Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a husband to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked Jesus again about this matter. He said to them, Whatever man divorces his spouse and marries another commits adultery. And if she divorces her spouse and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the reign of God belongs. I tell you the truth. Whoever does not receive the reign of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't fall into the trap Jesus' opponents set. They're not interested in Jesus' true heart on this question, so they don't receive it. Because there are three truths you can absolutely trust about Jesus, the Son of God, from this Gospel reading and from the heartbeat of Jesus' teaching and ministry throughout the Gospels. First, Jesus cares deeply, irrevocably, for vulnerable people. Second, Jesus cares deeply, irrevocably, about loving relationships. And third, Jesus never tramples God's children with rules, even with God's law. Hear that clearly. Jesus, one with the Father and the Spirit in the Holy Trinity, demonstrates that the triune God will even break their own divine law if it's going to hurt someone. Remember, this is a big reason why Jesus got killed, and it's why they're trying to test him today. He's developed a reputation for inclining to set aside even the Ten Great Commandments for the sake of healing and love. But before we dig into this, there is a huge elephant that we need to ask to leave this room. <laughs> this gospel text is problematic for reading in public worship. Not because it addresses sin, lots of scripture does. But this one seems to speak of sin that only affects some people. And it's a fundamental rule of preaching that you don't ever proclaim God's call to new life or God's naming of a sin and have it apply only to some of the people in the room. 
If what I am hearing God speak through Scripture doesn't apply to everyone, including me, it's not fair preaching. You never want to have a situation where some can sit back and think, this is all for those other folks. So, let's level the playing field. The hardest part of Jesus' teaching today is the private conversation afterwards in the house with the disciples, where he links divorce and remarriage with adultery. One of the Ten Commandments. Lots of faithful Christians that I know who are divorced and remarried struggle with this. But do you remember what else Jesus said? In Matthew 5, he reaffirms the commandment against adultery. And then he says that if you've even thought about being unfaithful with someone, you've committed adultery. There. Now we're all in the same boat. I mean, maybe one or two of you can't remember a time where you ever entertained that idea, but it's likely we have all committed adultery according to Jesus. So there's only one thing we can do, ask for God's forgiveness and trust in God's grace like we always do. And hear me now, you are loved and forgiven even of this sin. So what's Jesus really saying about divorce here then? He's right, his opponents already know God's law. They're just trying to trap him. So he angrily turns on them, telling them that it's because people are hard-hearted that divorce was even permitted and that they disregard, they aren't valuing God's creation of marriage. But there's a deeper injustice here that Jesus is coming after. And that is that a man could write a certificate of divorce and kick his wife out of the house. Wives did not have that power. Now remember our third truth. Jesus doesn't trample God's children even with God's law. And remember our first truth. Jesus cares deeply about vulnerable people. Divorce is one of the most vulnerable situations anyone can find themselves in. But in those times, women who were in such a situation would be destitute. They had no way to enter into the economy and provide for themselves. And the opponents want Jesus to give a once and for all answer. But Jesus refuses to reduce real human lives to one size fits all answers that can hurt people. So Jesus, the Son of God, welcomes and forgives a woman who is actually caught in adultery and turns his judgment and his critique on the men who seek to execute her. Every time Jesus is tested this way, he gives an answer that cannot be pinned down into a forever command, even if the church too often tries to do that. So if you really care about what Jesus thinks. Here's what's true. And this is based on everything Jesus taught and lived. If you are divorced, you are forever in God's heart. And it doesn't matter to Jesus what the circumstances were. But, if your marriage fell apart for complicated or simple reasons, you are forever in God's heart. If you were abandoned in your marriage, you are forever in God's heart. If you did the abandoning, you are forever in God's heart. If you were being hurt so badly, that you had to leave the marriage. You are forever in God's heart. 
And if you were the abuser, you are forever in God's heart. If your marriage ended because there was a truth about your identity that you either didn't know or had pushed down so far you couldn't see it, you are forever in God's heart. And if your spouse came out and that ended your marriage, you are forever in God's heart. If you're in a marriage that is life-giving, or if you're in a marriage that's painful and you don't know what to do, you are forever in God's heart. And if you know the pain of loneliness, whether it's because your beloved spouse died, or you don't have a spouse, you are forever in God's heart. Do you see? Nothing can separate you from God's love in Christ, ever. And if you wonder about the sin, Jesus' answer to you is exactly what he said to that woman. You're forgiven. Go and sin no more. Because in all things, You are forever in God's heart. And this all comes from Jesus' deep love and care for vulnerable people. It's why he pretty consistently breaks another one of the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment, for reasons of healing or grace or hunger. And it's why for the third week in a row we see Jesus lifting up children. These children who are so precious and beloved to their parents, as all children should be, They're bringing them to Jesus just to touch, to bless. And the disciples tell them to go away. Jesus is indignant. He's already told them to welcome children as they welcome Christ. He's already warned them against doing anything that would cause little ones who trust in him to sin. And they still don't get it. But today what he wants them to grasp is the very nature of children. Children are dependent, and children are vulnerable. Children lack agency, the ability to shape their world in a way that's helpful to them. Children don't control their lives. And children can only trust that someone will take care of them. And that's what it is to live in God's reign, Jesus says. You put all your dependence on God. You risk yourself with vulnerable love all the time. You let go of the idea that you can shape or control your life in such a way that you benefit. And you trust. And that's how this gospel reading ends for you. With an invitation to you to let Jesus, God with us, pick you up, embrace you in love, and bless you. Not because you're perfect and you've never sinned. Not because you've somehow made yourself someone or something God could consider worthy. And not because you can control God's love. But simply because the triune God loves you fully and wholly as you are forgives you all your failings because you are beloved. Gives you the law not to crush you, but to guide you to a way of life that is fulfilling and life-giving. God knows how vulnerable you are in this frightening world, and God will always be looking out for you. Breaking rules if necessary. Hoping that you have loving relationships that can sustain and bless you because dear one you are forever in God's heart and nothing can change that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen.